Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Riot here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Memoria Freeze video. And today we are checking out the reruns for the Eyes in Wonderland banners. Of course, these banners came out a couple of days ago, but I've been super busy with all the other news and content that's been coming out for Danmachi, including Danmachi Battle Chronicle, as well as the main Danmachi series, with the announcement that Volume 19 is coming in September. If you want to check out those videos, you can check them out. They're on the channel right now. But we've been super busy with all those videos, and instead, I had to delay this video to today, and, well, there's only a couple of hours to go until the banner leaves. So if you're deciding whether or not you want to summon on this Banner. check out this video see for yourselves what i think about all of these units right here right now of course how they are in this day and age and of course make up your mind after you watch this video now of course if you guys go on to enjoy this video as well remember to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more danmachi and danmachi memoria freeze content and let me know in the comment section down below did you guys summon on this banner and if so what did you guys end up getting and if you guys didn't summon on this banner and you have these units let me know, what do you guys think about these units in this day and age? Do you guys think they're good, bad, useful, usable in PvE, usable in PvP? Let me know, I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below in the comments. Now before we get into the video, I know you guys are probably wondering when am I going to talk about the Knights of Fianna Part 2 banner. That'll be in tomorrow's video, I will be making a video tomorrow evening talking about this banner. And on top of that, you might be also wondering, Gail, you don't sound that good. Well, I am not that good, my throat is really, really poor, I have a little bit of a cold. I just have a major sore throat and if you guys watched my previous video with the Danmachi Battle Chronicle video you guys already know that but just to let you guys know if you haven't watched that video and are wondering why am I sounding so rough and if I'm stuttering a little bit or just breaking up a little bit it's just because my throat is in a really really bad state right now so forgive me um, it's gonna last this way I think for another day or two hopefully by Saturday we're back to A-OK -okay standards basically alright let's talk about the two banners we'll go over the mysterious dream banner as well as the strange world banner and I think I'm going to start off with the A Strange World banner first and foremost. Because quite frankly speaking, I think this banner is pretty much inferior in every single way to this banner. I think this banner is just so much more valuable. And we'll of course go over all three of these units in just a moment once we're done with this banner. But I feel like while this banner has good units, right? These are all very usable characters. Bell's a nice assist. Raul is a fantastic unit as well in his own right. And Rivera can be usable in certain team compositions. I feel just generally these units are way more universal. So immediately I would say that I would kind of invalidate this banner i'd push it to the side to be quite honest unless you have bell at like plus four and you want to try and get that final copy i would say that this banner is a much much better banner to put your iris in if you're just trying to get one of these units i would say much better banner much much better banner so let's go over this banner and talk about why i feel this way regarding this banner now of course like i said this uh, this banner features white queen riveria knight of clubs raul and tea party rabbit bell Cornell as the assist our first act Actually, our first summonable four star bell assist as well by the way because we do have another bell assist but he was free to play from like Halloween 2018 way back when way back when so let's take a look at the adventures and assists of this banner now adventure white queen riveria leos alf is a fire magic attack type unit um if you take a look at her stats right it's not the worst case uh, uh spread to be quite honest she's got some really good endurance but in uh, return she does lose out a lot of agility and her dexterity is of course under a thousand but it's not that drastic it's just mainly that a lot of her agility has been given over to endurance basically so there's that factor now if you take a look at her special arts bloody murder queen it's an aoe ultra fire magic attack damage plus 90 percent per each self magic buff and ultra on guard rate and str magic agility dexterity and endurance minus 50 percent for three turns i will say that this is a really nice special arts to be honest it's very easy conditions to be quite honest it's only 180 uh, 180 percent if you just have two magic buffs right so that's very very good and then of course the debuffs itself are also pretty darn solid str magic decrease will help you if you're struggling defensively and then agility dexterity and endurance reductions are pretty solid overall but of course this would be amazing if you could get it off in game modes like war games when you're going up against you uh, other players you know pvp like telskir abyss or war games that sort of a debuff is really really handy for sure it's a really nice ability to have but of course it's locked behind the special art so that's where it kind of loses its touch a little bit i would say all right 
Let's take a look at our first combat skill, Dream Extinction. Foe's low fire magic attack with ultra and counter rate and removes thunder, earth, wind, light, and dark attack damage buffs. So it doesn't remove fire attack damage buffs. And self damage received attack type all and single targets minus 65% for 5 turns and 3 additional actions of mid fire magic attack with ultra and god rate and 40% chance to inflict sleep on foes very solid ability actually and frankly speaking the only issue i have with this ability is the main fact that it is a low modifier i wish it was a medium modifier i think that would have made it a little bit better but generally speaking she is a magic attacking unit right there's no fast modifier i think also another thing that could have helped her is maybe if she had an inherent slow modifier so it would, if it was like aoe slow medium fire magic attack which would have, which would mean that she would go last no matter what but even still because she's a magic unit right and you're going up against say units that buff up on turn one right what she's able to do is she's able to strip away all those attack buffs basically which helps you out tremendously in terms of basically countering any strong attacks coming from the enemy so very solid ability i would say and then on top of that she's giving herself a 65 percent damage reduction basically from both aoe and single target attacks for five turns very solid ability very very solid ability and then the three additional actions of mid fire magic attack with ultra on god rate and 40 percent chance to sleep on foes it's not bad and i think the 40 percent chance to sleep on foes especially if you're running something like say for example say you're running otaro right hero festa otaro plus this reveria you know you'd be in a good position because you're going to be able to inflict some ailments while also being somewhat of a stall team basically uh with those two units together you know something to consider potentially Irritable Queen is an AoE super fire magic attack with ultra on god rate, damage plus 70% per each self magic reduction skill, and self magic critical rate fire attack damage plus 70% for 4 turns, and 60% HP heal, and removes P res and M res debuffs. Okay, let's break this down. This is quite a complex ability. So, the first part I'm not going to focus too much on. It's a super fire magic attack with ultra on god rate. You guys already know what that means damage plus 70 percent per each self magic reduction skill so for any debuff that you have for magic you will gain an extra 70 percent damage boost so if the enemies have a magic reducing assist as well as a magic reducing adventure you will get 140 percent damage this is good and bad you'll see this uh damage boost proccing primarily in war games and telskir abyss and less so in pve content so that's where you kind of lose out a little bit she'll still be really solid in like seven zone for example because they do reduce your magic and strength in that game mode so in that regards still solid but not the best ability to be quite honest and then on top of that she does give herself magic critical rate fire attack damage which is really nice along with the 60 percent hp heal it's fantastic and then of course removing any p res m res debuffs on herself is great because again it leans in towards the whole damage reduction thing she has going on in her first skill so very solid second skill but nothing to write home about third skill spinal Ma punishment is a single target super fire magic attack with temporary grade magic boost and ultra critical rate honestly not the best third ability i think this is pretty weak in frank in all honesty i'm not a big fan of it uh temporary grade magic boost is again like i've said not the greatest ability so yeah i'm not a big fan of it i'm not a big fan of the third skill first two skills pretty solid i would say that she's primarily an aoe attacker or even primarily i would say an aoe war game slash pvp option more so than anything else sorry about that i had to take a pause there just to get my get it out of my system for the throat um knight of club raul nord is the next unit we're taking a, a look at water physical attack type unit and frankly speaking if you look at his stats it's pretty solid and honestly when he first released right when we got the banners for eyes in wonderland i thought he was going to be the best unit in the two banners right out of the six units we got he would be the best unit admittingly i was a little bit wrong there he's still very good but definitely there were better options when it came to these two banners and we'll talk about those options later on his special arts card revolution is an aoe ultra water physical attack damage plus 80 percent per each self dexterity buff which is again very easy to accomplish so it's a 160 percent boost there basically an ultra penetration rate and he also gives himself four additional actions of high water physical attacks and status debuff plus two turns and p res and m res minus 50 percent for two turns on foes very solid ability really really nice and there's nothing to complain too much about that one in all honesty you guys get it very very nice ability his first combat skill descending cards 
allies fast 20% HP and MP heal, and null physical attack and M attack times one, and fire, thunder, earth, wind, light, dark res, and god raid, and P res, M res, 40% for one turn. When I saw that, right, I thought it was insane. Getting the HP MP heal, null attack times one on both physical and magic, along with all the resistances and everything, I was like, that's insane. That is genuinely insane, you know? And of course, this, this unit at the time reminded me a little bit of Nocturnal Elf Ryu. But the problem is, right, is one, it costs a lot of MP, and two, the resists are only for one turn. If the resists were for two turns, I think a lot more people would be more amiable to it. But the problem is, it's only one turn. Um, the null physical and magic attacks are only times one. It's not times two like Nocturnal Elf for you. And overall, it just feels a little bit eh in that regards, right? Um, but still, people still do use this. And to good effect, to be fair, uh, it's still a good option. It's still a very, very nice ability. It's just that it's not as strong as I thought it would be initially right and that's the problem it's still a very good ability though very very good ability shuffle step is an aoe super water physical attack damage plus 40 percent per each dexterity buff and ultra on counter rate and self dexterity str and water attack damage plus 70 percent for four turns it's not bad i think it's really solid 80 percent damage plus super um is very solid along with the str dexterity and water attack damage bonus it's good it's very very good uh, overall very solid ability Cut the deck is a single target super water physical attack damage plus 80% per each self dexterity buff skill and ultra penetration rate. Again, very solid third skill, much better than Riveria's over there, down there. I like it. I like it a lot, to be quite honest. Very, very nice. The only thing I think that this unit is missing is some form of additional actions in his main kit. He obviously has it in his special arts, but he should have also had it on top of like shuffle step or something, I feel. That's the one thing this Raul is missing as well. So let's take a look at the uh, passives for both these units. Of course, Raul has 5% HP and MP regen, especially with his first skill. That was definitely necessary. And then if you take a look at Riveria, she does get 25% P res and M res, which again helps her whole sort of thing with, uh, you know, her damage reduction and everything. It's very, very useful for that reg uh, for that reason. All right, Tea Party Rabbit Bell Cornell, And he's actually a good assist, to be quite honest. So Rabbit in Wonderland++, plus plus, the MLB assist skill for this bell, is ally status debuff minus three turns and, uh, and self plus four actions or instant effects of when attacked removes STR and magic buffs on a foe up to twice per turn. Very solid ability. And uh, the thing is with this uh, bell, right? He's a backline assist effectively. You're gonna wanna bring him from the back. And the idea is that you'll basically remove any debuffs on yourself, basically. Um, it's good for stall, especially, right? As, uh, especially if you're trying to build a stall team effectively right this bell coming in from the back will help you remove any of those p res m res debuffs or light res but debuffs or whatever it may be right it removes those debuffs um as much as it can obviously with the three turns decrease and then from there you're in a good position because you also remove any str and magic buffs on the foe uh coming in from the back basically very solid ability um a, a very underrated assist i feel definitely a very underrated assist so something to keep an eye out on overall I would say this banner is not bad, but I would say that it's a definite skip unless you have Bell at like plus four, I would say, for sure. On the other hand, this banner though, I really wouldn't blame you if you decided to do all five steps on this banner. Probably one of the better banners to rerun, in all honesty, outside of obviously the fifth anniversary banners and some of the LN release banners for Australia Record, right? This banner is something I can't really blame anybody uh, for, you know, not skipping, to be quite honest. That being said though, I would urge people to be very cautious, to be quite honest. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, I'm about to do a multi on this banner to try and get that eyes because Lost Girl Eyes Wallenstein is a water physical attack type unit that has probably not seen an issue in the last year. Since her release, she's never been uh, not featured in the War Games arena, to be quite honest. She's such a fantastic option, you know? Um, a unit that I underrated when she launched, I will admit I judged her extremely poorly, to be quite honest. Um, but if you look at her stats, right? 2170 STR, good endurance, good dexterity, really nice agility, really nice stat spread, to be quite honest. Very, very nice stat spread. 
Um, her special arts, Eyes in Wonderland, is an AoE Ultra Water Physical Attack with temporary Great Strength Boost and Ultra on Guard Rate and Seal, and Allies Water Attack Damage plus 80% and Foes Water Res minus 50% for 4 turns. Very solid all-around ability for her special arts. Obviously, not the greatest fan of temporary great strength boost on the special arts, but what she does in terms of the support ability is very, very important. And she's definitely meant for war games more so than anything else with the seal as well in her special arts, right? Now, what makes her so good is her skills. Her first skill, Captive Thrust, is an AoE slow super water physical attack, so it goes last. That's one thing to note. It also has Ultra and Counter Rate. And then it does agility and dexterity minus 35%, which is great. You're debuffing the enemy's agility, right? Then on top of that, you're giving yourself agility and dexterity plus 45% for 5 turns. Because you're going last, you're giving yourself that agility buff. Then 4 additional actions happen of mid-water physical attack damage plus 35% per each STR buff and 35% chance to seal a foe, which is great, right? But then, what makes that good, right? You might be thinking, well, Gail, what makes it so good, right? Because the modifiers don't seem that high, right? 45% agility to self. I mean, really? Is that is that good? That's what I thought initially as well. That's what I thought. But then, when you put it into play, right? And what she does with her second skill, Dream Piercer, she gives herself fast STR and water attack damage and ailment res plus 60% for four turns. So the STR buff that she gives herself does get applied to the additional action. So that's point one. And foes STR magic water res and seal res minus 35%. And damage received attack type all targets plus 35% for one turn. So basically what you're doing here is that one, it's a fast buff. So you're gonna go first no matter what especially with the fact that you've given yourself an agility buff that is well a going to apply because it's a slow buff that you're giving yourself right it's a slow attack that means the buff will get applied last unless there is a slower unit let's say for example better bell and ryu goes slower than this eyes does let's say for example then only will you not get that agility buff but if you can pop off that agility buff Dream Piercer is a self-fast SCR water attack damage in ailment increasing uh, uh, buff basically, which means she will go first. And then on top of that, she will debuff the SCR magic water res and seal res of the enemy, as well as increasing damage from AoE attacks, which in turn increases the power of the mid-water physical attack damage plus 35% per each SCR buff skill and 35% seal on foes ability. That additional action, once you use D Dream Piercer, will proc and it will deal a lot of damage. So in that regards, they just blend well, extremely well. So it's really, really good. It is really, really nice. Penetrating Curse, her third skill, is nothing to, uh, you know, write home about. It's a single target super water physical attack with temporary great strength boost and ultra on guard rate and seal. Nothing crazy, something we can just move on from really easily. But those first two skills are excellent, in all honesty. Cheshire Cat Anakiri Autumn is a Thunder Physical Attack type unit who is a single target unit. If you look at her stats, stat spread is not bad at all. Over 1000 dexterity makes her a very good unit, unit for Record Buster. Higher chances to get crits and penetrations and stuff, right? Her special arts Mischievous Bite is a Ultra Thunder Physical Attack with temporary great strength boost and ultra critical rate and Thunder Res minus 60% for 4 turns and self plus 5 actions of high Thunder Physical Attack with high penetration rate of 4. Now, Again, I am going to moan about temporary great strength boost once again. Oh, it's not the greatest and stuff. But to be fair, she does reduce the opponent's thunder res by 60% for one. And then two, she gives five actions. Five actions of high thunder physical attack with high penetration rate on a foe. Excellent ability. Excellent ability. First combat skill that she has is Deceiving Feline. It's a self-increased SA gate charge gained by 100%. Thumbs up there. And she gives herself STR and Thunder Attack damage plus 70% for 4 turns. Brilliant buff. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant buff. Overall, fantastic. You no need to complain about any of those things. You're giving yourself SA Gate Charge gain, which is great. STR and Thunder Attack damage boost is great as well. 70% of that. It's great. And then 4 additional actions of Mid Thunder Physical Attack of Foe with high penetration rate. Overall, very, very solid. Very, very solid. Cat Scratch is a single target fast high thunder physical attack with high ultra and guard rate and STR magic and thunder res minus 40% for, for two turns. Again, nothing to complain about. Reduces the opponent's STR and magic, helps your defenses if you're struggling with uh, surviving. And then on top of that, also reduces the opponent's thunder res by 40%. Overall, very, very solid. Romping Onslaught is her main damage dealing effect, basically. Foe slow super thunder physical attack, damage plus 90%. 
per each self SA gate charge gain effect. So 180% damage plus super thumbs up there. Always it will be. And high penetration rate and ally status buff plus two turns. Overall, very solid. Really, really nice single target unit. Um, it may not seem like that initially, especially with the special arts and everything. But when you add up everything and all the additional actions and everything, she's fantastic. She's a really, really solid single target unit. These are their passives as well. If you want to have a look and see for yourself exactly what's going on. Overall, fantastic. And even Ana Kitty with the counter ability, right? She's able to increase the opponent's status debuffs by one turn, allowing you to basically extend those status debuffs tremendously, especially if you can get counters off consistently. Very, very solid. Now, we move on to Mad Hatter Hermes, who may not seem like much initially, right? Because all he does is AoE damage received increases from AoE and single target attacks plus 20% and guard rate minus 20%, right? We, you might be wondering, well, Gale, you know, we have units that can give 25% to AoE. We have units that can give 25% to single target, right? Why? What makes Hermes so good? Well, the thing is, he gives 20% to both AoE and single target. And especially with the uh, units that you're using right now in Record Buster and 7 Zone and so on and so forth, right? You're using a blend of the two. You're using both AoE and single target attacks. Take Bell, for example, right? Hero Festa Bell. His abilities right his skills his first two skills are aoe his third skill is single target and then his his special arts is aoe if you take him into record buster like i do you're gonna use his uh, single target skill for the majority of the fight but when you're special artsing with him you're using an aoe skill so that's where this hermes comes into play and becomes very much usable so bear that in mind very very good unit um honestly fantastic assist fantastic assist now of course one thing to note is that these guys are all non-time limited units so you can get them from tickets um but i don't actually have the eyes i have hermes i have uh anna kitty i think i have riveria i have raul i know that and i do have bell i just need eyes and i'm gonna try and do that even though it's not the smartest thing to do i would probably say to skip these banners as always i really wouldn't blame you if you're trying to go for that final copy of like Hermes or Bell, but otherwise I would probably say to save up and you know, you can get one of these guys from tickets. I just want to try and get this eyes. I'm going to be that guy and I'm going to not listen to my own advice, to be honest. I'm not listening to my own advice. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I just get eyes and I can happily leave this banner. Um, I'm hoping though. I'm hoping that we do get eyes. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, uh, I think this is non-guaranteed. I think this is actually non-guaranteed. This is Hermes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, that was non-guaranteed. So two and one, I will take it. It's worth it so far. So far, so good. I think Hermes I have at plus one, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just check. Maybe plus two now. Um, okay, I mean, I guess I'll take it. I, I was raving about him just a second ago. Uh, let me have a look and see, actually. What is he at right now? Um, let me do four star, regular, um, and Hermes. Let's see um yeah he is plus one so i've got him up to plus two now or uh, plus three now thumbs up there i guess either way um uh, i mean i'll take it as a w to be quite honest getting a uh, an assist from plus one to plus three of one multi is really really nice now i can if i want to use prism bonds because i have enough prism bonds if i go to my inventory right i'm saving the invent uh prism bonds for the upcoming anniversary right um especially if we do get a non-time limited banner because usually we do get one non-time limited banner um i've been saving up my assist prism bonds i have four of them i could technically mlb him with two of those but i am saving them for the upcoming anniversary uh just in case we do get a non-time limited banner anyways let me know what you guys think of the eyes in wonderland banner like i said do you guys think they're still good units do you guys still use them did you guys summon on them if so how did it go let me know in the comment section down below once again appreciate all of you for tuning in leave a like subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time take it easy everybody Bye bye